G'day aspiring engineers. In this video, we're going to revise this third part in the 16 basic tutorials. The old ones need to be updated because there's been a change in the user interface since they were made. Welcome to Future Engineering. The future starts now. In the previous tutorial, I showed you how to save time with the mirror sketch tool. This time I want to show you how to avoid a bad habit that I see a lot of beginners make. I can't tell you how many people I've seen who start on a drawing and then make a mistake and then they hit the delete key and delete all their work and start again because they don't know how to edit or correct. Then they do it again, they make a small mistake and they delete 10 minutes work. And they've done that three times already. And that's okay until you've got an hour's work there waiting for you on the computer and then uh, you make a small mistake and boom, you hit that delete key with a, just by force of habit and all your work is gone. Let me show you how to correct and edit your work and we'll get onto that. I'm going to make a few mistakes on purpose and we'll fix them. Here's Fusion 360. Let's save the document first off. and We'll call this one part three and put it in 16 parts. Let's turn on the point of origin so that we can see where we are. We can see the three planes in space. Let's also just make sure that we're capturing the design history. The, uh, the timeline bar is down below and we can see the settings icon in the corner of it. So that's ready. Now you've learned the first keyboard shortcut and that was E for extrude. Today I'm going to show you another one. Well, it's actually a few because they're all in the sketch environment and they all start with the first letter of the tool. So we'll do three or four and that'll be real easy. Let's do it. This part is symmetrical, so when we create sketch and choose the blue and red axis plane, which is the ZX plane, it'll turn to face us. I'm going to start with a center line because this part does have symmetry. Well, I could click on the line tool like that, but if I hit the L key, L for line, you can see that now the cursor has the line tool active. And I'm going to use the construction line style, and I'm not going to try and get it on the point of origin. I'm going to make it Bit, just a bit off just going to make sure that it's vertical and you can see that when I've got the, uh, the line vertical it snaps to vertical and you can see a little icon there which is the icon for the geometric constraint that automatically applies now to, this looks a, li a little bit like stepping on chewing gum and you've got chewing gum stuck to your shoe the way to make it let go is to hit the green tick the cursor still has the line tool active and so what I'm going to do is hit the escape key which causes the cursor to turn back to the select tool click on the coincident constraint and choose the construction line and then the point of origin it jumps on now I'm going to turn off the construction line style hit the escape key hit the L key for line and then I'm going to draw half of the part that you can see in the drawing I'll start down here somewhere as long as it's somewhere on the construction line and you'll notice that the line tool cursor snaps onto the construction line with a little blue X so if I click while that thing's visible then I can go out here and I don't want to make this exactly the right size with the mouse like this. I'm going to use a dimension to make it exactly the correct size. And it's helpful actually if it's the wrong size because then I can see when it moves to the correct size. So a vertical line there, then a horizontal line. So let's do one that's purposely not horizontal. Then I'm going to make a bit of a vertical line here. The next thing I want to do is show you something that the line will can do which is a bit of a cool trick I'm just going to go back a step Control Z gets rid of that previous section of line I'm going to hit the L key again to get the line tool this time I'll click on that last point and the line tool is now active now instead of just clicking once I'm going to click and drag to do something interesting so I just want to make it so that that last segment of line here that little vertical bit is snapping to vertical and click and drag and you get a curve coming out of the end of the line now this is a bit tricky to get the hang off. Persevere with that, practice a little bit. Then I'm going to come over to this mirror line again and uh, I want it to snap on there. But I want to snap on there so that it's going to be not quite perpendicular to the construction line. So if I put it there, that's good enough. Now because we were on the construction line, the line tool did let go. So I'm going to hit the escape key to get back to the select tool. I'm going to first of all go to the horizontal vertical constraint. This is the geometric constraints in the toolbar above. And that one is the horizontal or vertical constraint. And so I'm going to click on this one that I made purposely out of horizontal. That applied the little icon there, which is for the horizontal constraint. 
You can see that there are a few geometric constraints, one in each corner here, one to show that it's horizontal, another one to show that it, this line is vertical. Then there's this tangent symbol, which indicates that there's a tangent constraint between the vertical line and the little curve that comes out of it. So this is a good uh, time to use the mirror sketch command. So what I'm going to do is hit the escape key to get back to the select tool, go to the create menu, drop it down and find mirror. There it is. There's the mirror dialog box. And Fusion 360 now wants to know what are the objects to mirror? Well, I'm going to use a selection box to select all of the lines at once. The next thing Fusion 360 wants to know is the mirror line. So I'll click on the next field there to turn it blue. And so the next thing I click on will be the mirror line. And that'll be this vertical construction line, which causes the selected geometry to mirror across. So I'll OK that. You can see that there's some nice blue lines there and these can all be moved around because they're blue they can be moved a little bit there's a bit of free movement here now let's continue i want to constrain this a little bit and one thing i want to do is make sure that these two curves have a tangential relationship like this one here and the way to do that is to click on the constraint tool at the top which is tangent and you can see the little tangent symbol now attached to my cursor I'll select one of those curves and then the other and we have a tangent relationship between those two curves now. We still have all of these lines that are looking blue. Hit the escape key to turn back to the select tool. You can see that these things are all still movable. Let's begin to nail this down. Now the dimension tool is here. This is the sketch dimension. It's for dimensional constraints. If I hit the D key that is D for dimension, that loads the cursor with the dimension tool. So let's see what happens here. If I click there, then hmm, that's not what we wanted. Because it was mirrored, it only picks up half the lines. We dropped out of the dimension tool. I'll hit the D key to start the dimension tool one more time. This time I'm going to click one time on that corner at the bottom left, and then the corner at the bottom right, and then I'll be able to place the dimension to give me the information that I want here. So that blue focused field needs to be 120, as the drawing tells us. Then you can see that we've got some of the lines beginning to turn black. Next, I'm going to put a dimension between that line and the line at the bottom of the part. This is supposed to be 10. I'm going to make a mistake on purpose. I'm going to make it 20, and I'll come back to that later. The next thing I want to do is put a dimension between the point of origin of the document and the bottom of the part. We'll put that over here and make that 30. Then we'll put a radius dimension on the curve and the radius according to the drawing is 30. Notice that just about everything is black now except the, uh, the curve at the top. Hit the escape key to get back to the select cursor. And let's see what we can do here. We can we cannot drag this geometry around now that it's black. It's been nailed down, it's been constrained but this can move up and down. You can tell by the drawing that the point of origin of this curve needs to be coincident with the point of origin of the document, and it's off there at the moment. So let's change that. Here's the coincident constraint in the constraints toolbar. Click on it, and you can see that the coincident constraint is now attached to my cursor. I'm gonna click once on the point of origin of the curve. Then there's uh, the point of origin of the document, and now the point of origin of the curve is now coincident with the point of origin of the document. At this point, I'll hit the escape key to get the select cursor, and I'll just hit the E key to both finish the sketch and take us into the extrude tool. There it is. Here's the extrude dialog box, and you can see by the drawing that the distance for this extrude needs to be 30 millimeters. So I'll get the blue focused field and type in 30 and press enter. Next, we're going to make another sketch on the front face of our model and then use the circle tool. Now, the way to get the circle tool is, you guessed it, it's C for circle. And uh, there it is. Now the circle tool is attached to my cursor. I'm going to start this right on the point of origin and draw it to purposely the wrong size. Then I'm going to hit the D key, which drops me out of the circle tool and takes me straight into the dimension tool. And then click once on the circle that we just drew and it's asking for a diameter and you can see from the drawing that the diameter here is 30. And even though the radius of the outer curve was 30, the diameter of this inner one is 30, 
and I think you'll understand what's going on here because the diameter is twice the radius. I'm going to hit the escape key to get the cursor back to the select cursor. I'm going to hit the E key to take us out of the sketch and into the extrude tool and Fusion 360 wants to know what the profile is in this case and it's that sketch that we just made, just one single circle. This time the little blue arrow is pointing out in the wrong direction so what I'm going to do is type in minus 30 and that's a cut and you see the operation is set here to cut automatically. OK and if we use the orbit tool we can see that we can see right through the hole there. There's another feature that we need to use. Let's hit the escape key to get out of the orbit tool. Here is the, the fillet tool. So click on the fillet tool, the fillet dialog box opens and I'm going to select a couple of edges here. It's the one in the corner here and a one over here. And you notice that I didn't have to turn the model around in order to select the one that was out of sight. The drawing shows us that the radius of these two fillets should be four, but I'm going to put in five. I'm going to make a mistake on purpose and click OK. So our part is done, but it's really got two errors in it, hasn't it? So let's see how to correct those errors. And this is where you can save yourself a lot of bad habits by learning how to edit and correct your mistakes. So let's go back to the original sketch, which is on the timeline, the first sketch in the timeline. And if you right click on that first sketch in the timeline, you'll find that there's an entry there called Edit Sketch. And that opens the sketch and we can now change some things if we need to. So with the select cursor, I can double click on the dimension which I made purposely the wrong one, change it from 20 to 10, press enter, and that's ready to finish that sketch, which updates the model. The next thing I want to do is correct the error with the fillet. And the fillet is not done with a sketch so much as it's a feature on its own. And if we right click on the feature, there's an entry there which says edit feature. Click on edit feature and the focus field for those two fillets is there. And I can type in the correct eyes, which is four and press OK. Now we've got that the right size. So now our part is done. Please get into the habit as soon as you can of editing and correcting your mistakes rather than hitting the delete key and wasting time. Well, I hope you're learning something. Now, please don't hold back. If you've got questions, go to the comments and ask the question about how you're going, if I can help you in any way. Now, if you're ready to go on to number four in this series, here's how you do it. There's the channel. Go to the playlists. Here's the playlist. And that's what it looks like. They're all there. I'll see you next time.